Okay, it's time to go back to some graphical uh, stuff. Okay, um, and what we'll do right now is we'll try to figure out how to extract information out of velocity versus time graphs. We've already done things with position versus time graphs. Okay, so you know how to find your instantaneous velocity, you know how to find your average velocity, and all those things. So the methods are very clear. Okay, uh, once again, from to get the acceleration out of velocity versus time graph is very simple. All right. Uh, so the procedure is the instantaneous acceleration is simply the slope of the tangent. Okay, uh, the average acceleration is very simple. Just use the formula v v x v f minus v i over delta t, and you'll get the answer. The 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 what's it called? The important thing now here is that the tricky thing is to figure out the displacement and the distance travel. Okay, so let's have let's figure out how to do this. So how to obtain the displacement? So let's take a simple example. Okay, and let us see if we can figure something out. Now, if you recall what we did for the uh, from the position versus time graph, how we obtained the instantaneous velocity, okay, we used something from geometry. We figured out that this particular value was going to be the instantaneous was going to be the slope of the tangent. Okay, and the reason we had slopes is because we had quotient. If you remember, your average velocity was equal to xf minus xi over del over tf minus ti. So when we have this, this reminded you of of slopes from your geometry classes. Okay, so anytime we deal with quotients, okay, we have uh, we, you know we can rely on slopes to get get us the answer. Okay. So, so keep that in mind. So now we're going to try to make a similar connection with displacement and see what geometrical entity will allow us this. So let us say that we have a motion, okay, where an object is moving with a constant velocity, say some value v, and it's going within ti and tf, okay. And we want to know, hey, how much is the displacement? What is the displacement of this object? Delta x equals how much, okay? Uh, now you already know that if you move, let's say, if you move with a constant velocity of five meters per second, in one second you've traveled five meters, in two seconds you've traveled ten meters, in three seconds fifteen, and so on and so forth. So the if you're moving with a constant velocity, the dis distance or the displacement is simply the product of the two. Okay, so we can apply it. We can do the same thing here, and we get this is equal to v times the time interval, which is tf minus ti. But now we ask, hey, what is this product geometrically? What is it? If you look at this particular shape, what is the product of this side multiplied by this side? What does that tell us? Okay. And if you've guessed the that the answer is the area, then you are perfectly correct. Okay. So that product is simply the area under the curve. Okay. So our methods we'll use that in order to find the displacement from the velocity versus time graph, and we could do this even when the velocity is not constant. Okay. If it's, if it was, it's if it you know the velocity is changing, just find the area under the graph. Okay. For instance, if the velocity looks something like this, just find the area under this triangle, and then you'll have the answer. Okay. So, so our method is to finding the displacement. So delta x from this graph thing is simply the area under the graph. Okay, I will make a note here that you must keep the sign. Okay, by which well, what I mean is if the graph is above the time axis, okay, the area is positive and if the graph is below the time axis, then the area is negative. So make a note of that. So this will give me a positive area. This will give me a negative area. Okay. Now this is when you are finding the displacement. Now when you find the distance, you basically just add up all the areas, ignore the sign. So distance is going to be equal to add up 
the areas okay and simply ignore the sign all right so hopefully that helps all right let's apply all this to a problem and it'll all become very clear okay so we have a graph now we have a problem and you know we have a velocity versus time uh, information in this graph so the first question we ask is what is the average acceleration between one second and four seconds okay uh, the the answer to this is simple as long as you go back to the definition which is i average equals vf minus vi over delta t okay and we do vf minus vi at four seconds you ask what is the v the final what is the velocity if you look at the graph it is negative 10 at one second what is the velocity it is positive 10 so it is vf minus vi and then we ask the time interval which is equal to 4 minus 1 so it is equal to negative 20 over 3 meters per second square all right so that's the answer to one part of the problem Okay, so now we're going to find the instantaneous acceleration at three seconds. Okay, uh, once again, if we go back to the instructions for finding instantaneous acceleration, we know that all we need to do is find, you know, draw tangent and find the slope of the tangent. Okay, and uh, in this case, uh, the tangent at the three second mark is the line itself. It's basically going to be this line right here. Okay and uh, let's figure out the slope of this line in order to achieve this we can take any two points on the line uh, and you know I'm just going to take this point here which is uh, whose coordinates are 2 comma 10 now I could take this one whose coordinates are 3 comma 0 and so my instantaneous acceleration a will be equal to the rise which is in which in this case is 0 minus 10 over the run and so this ends up being minus 10 meters per second square okay now we have the question when is the object moving to the left okay think about this now a common answer that people give in this case okay is the that the, the time would be from between two and four seconds now, if you're saying that answer, okay, uh, you're thinking about the position versus time graph, in which case the slope that gave the velocity had to be negative. Now, in this case, realize that the velocity is already given. So we ask the question, hey, what is the condition for an object to be moving to the left? Okay, what we realize is that V must be negative. And if V is negative, then the object is moving to the left. So in this case, ask, look at the graph and say, when is V negative? and the time will be between 3 seconds and 5 seconds ok so here's another question here we say when is the object at rest ok uh, once again the common mistake here is to say that the object is at rest between 1 and 2 seconds and if you're saying that you're again thinking about the position versus time graph in which case it would have been correct because at that point the slope would have been 0 and you would have had the right answer However, this is the velocity versus time graph. And when the slope of the velocity is zero, that simply means that the acceleration is zero. Okay, it doesn't say anything about the object being at rest. So the condition for the object to be at rest is very simple. V is equal to zero. When is the velocity zero? And if you look at the graph, it's happening at t equals zero seconds, at t equals three seconds, and t equals five seconds. So be very careful about that. Okay, so in this case now, we're going to figure out the displacement between 0 seconds and 5 seconds. So let's figure out how to do this, okay? So our method is very simple. To find the displacement, find the area under the graph. Now, uh, we, have, we have a positive area and a negative area. So we'll have to keep track of that, okay? So what we can do is we can break it up into various parts. So you can find the displacement between 0 and 1 second okay uh, we can find the area of that triangle and that area is equal to one half okay times uh, the base times the height which gives me five meters okay we can repeat the same for uh, not zero but uh, between one and two seconds in one and two seconds we have a rectangle and the area is the base times the height okay which happens to be 10 meters 
Within two and three seconds, we have once again the uh, a triangle and whose area you can all calculate to be five meters. Okay, so we got that. Okay, and between three and five seconds, we have another triangle whose area, okay, when you calculate the area, it ends up being one half times the base, two times the height, 10, and that ends up giving us uh, 10 meters. Okay, so these are just the areas without putting any signs in it. But of course, the bottom will have to be negative. So my total displacement is going to be 20 for the top minus 10 for the bottom. It will be equal to 10 meters. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now we ask, what is the distance traveled between 0 and 5 seconds? We've done all the hard work in this case. And, uh, you know, all we need to do is go back to our areas and figure out. We knew that the area between 1 and 3 was 20 meters. And that between 3 and 5 was 10. So my total distance traveled is simply equal to 20 plus 10 is equal to 30 seconds. Okay, so this you know gives us all the stuff that we can do in the problem. We could have found uh, accelerations, instantaneous, and average. We can find um, you know when is the object moving to the left, to the right. The conditions are obviously different from what it was for the position versus time graph. So please keep that in mind. We could also find distances and displacements. And frankly, once we know the displacement and the distance, you can easily go ahead and find the average velocity and the average acceleration. Sorry, uh, and the average speed. The average velocity would be the total displacement over time. So for bet between 0 and 5 seconds, the average velocity would be 10 divided by 5, which would be 2 meters per second squared. No, what am I saying? 2 meters per second. And the average speed would be 30 divided by, oh, by the way, this is meters, 30 divided by 5, which would be 6 meters per second. Okay, so hopefully uh, you understand all these things. And when you do a problem by yourself, all this will become very clear. This should wrap up all the kinds of problems that you'll come across uh, within the chapter. All right, uh, that is it.